Welcome back to TechLens Need to Know, the continuation of our popular monthly GPU crisis update where we cover some of the most important topics that you need to know when it comes to graphics cards, PC hardware, and gaming news. So check out the full playlist below, but this month, the month of June, we're going to be covering some really exciting news now that we have significantly deeper information pertaining to the upcoming release of several new hardware launches in both the CPU and the GPU space. We are first going to unpack everything with regards to AMD's upcoming next-gen CPUs, including features and suspicious performance performance claims potentially designed to confuse the competition. We will then follow up with NVIDIA and key updates for their new RTX 4000 series graphics cards, which they are potentially panic releasing before AMD's next generation. And speaking of Radeon RX 7000 GPUs, we need to clear up the latest performance rumors circulating around that have people worried, worried AMD's next generation may seriously underperform compared to what we expected. Then we're going to make sure that the crypto situation and GPU pricing isn't bouncing back, even in light of recent alarming news. So TechLens news for June 20. 2022? Let me explain. Starting out with our deeper news topic before we jump into next-gen GPUs. AMD released some more information regarding the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs during their Computex keynote, which confirms and clears up some of the previous rumors. Oh, and also introduces some more. Let me show you. Starting out with the specs, the new CPUs are a significant redesign, confirmed by AMD to be using TSMC's 5 nanometer process, offering a higher transistor density compared to Ryzen 5000. What this means is more compute power can be packed into the same amount of physical space. And there are potentially other benefits with regards to efficiency and heat output, but those benefits may be used to increase the clock speed. Speaking of, AMD are seriously whipping their clock out, showing off a pre-production Ryzen 7000 CPU hitting a staggering 5.5 gigahertz on a single core, whilst playing Ghostwire Tokyo. Although it is worth noting that there wasn't any other on-screen logging or information regarding CPU temperature, power draw, cooling solution, nothing. The only thing that we can take from that is that it can hit 5.5, which is a contributing factor to performance, but the actual performance can only be determined through thorough testing, preferably by independents such as myself or any other media outlet you trust. But there are some other architectural changes AMD have implemented designed to increase performance, such as doubling the level two cache, which is used for storing recent or frequently used data the CPU needs and an AI accelerated hardware block used to improve AI workload support and performance. AMD states that this design contributes to 31% better performance compared to the 12900K in their Blender workload and quote, greater than 15% single thread uplift, comparing a 5950X to their 16 core Ryzen 7000 pre-production sample. Admittedly, this is a pretty abnormal way to state this information as it calculates both instructions per clock and clock frequency, which they did not disclose. These two things specifically specifically have caused a lot of confusion and led people to believe that AMD are trying to sandbag Intel's upcoming 13th gen launch by downplaying Ryzen 7000 performance claims because of the uncharacteristic single thread uplift claim over IPC percentage and the fact that 31% less time is not the same as 31% faster. Percentages don't work like that. And it's difficult to believe that this was missed by several departments review, leading people to believe that AMD intentionally did this so Intel can't respond by increasing their clock speed or shuffling their product stack. However, Ryzen 7000 is supposed to be released around September, October time and Intel's 13th gen shortly after. Also, it's meant to be a performance champion. So get subscribed to make sure that you don't miss my updates on that. This means that anything other than pricing adjustments may not be feasible this late in the game. So I hope AMD are just being conservative as stated by Robert Halleck, director of AMD's technical marketing division or just being unintentional idiots before releasing further performance and power information coming soon. But what about max core count? Well, as far as we know, Ryzen 7000 won't be increasing their max core count, at least at launch, still topping out 16 cores, 32 threads, using up to two chiplets containing a maximum of eight cores each, plus an IO die, like its predecessors. But the IO die, used to handle communication between the memory, the chipset, and PCI Express devices, is also getting a redesign too, going from Global Foundry's 12 nanometer to 6 nanometer TSMC. With the upgrade, many additional anticipated features are coming to the platform, including integrated RDNA 2 graphics for, as far as we know, all anticipated Ryzen 7000 CPUs, the latest DDR5 memory support with apparently exceptional memory overclocking, which could help increase Infinity Fabric speed for CPU performance, plus 24 lanes of PCI Express 5.0 with utilization dependent on the motherboard. It's worth mentioning that there will be no DDR4 memory support, so I am extremely happy that DDR5 is no longer only bought on eBay for like 
times its retail price. But unlike the generous compatibility we've previously seen on Ryzen, backwards compatibility will not be a thing for both the next generation of CPUs or the upcoming B650, X670, or X670 Extreme motherboards. And even if they were architecturally compatible, the socket design isn't. AMD are migrating away from a PGA design as seen in all previous Ryzen CPUs to an LGA design similar to Intel CPUs, with a max CPU TDP support of 170 watts, which is the confirmed modified statement by AMD, and 65 watts more than the default TDP of the 5950X. But the good news is, if your current cooler is beefy enough, you can carry it forward, as AMD confirmed that current coolers will be compatible with the new socket, leading me to believe that the main body of the new funky looking heat spreader is similarly sized compared to current generation Ryzen. But the big concern that I have for this generation isn't the high end though, it's the low end. Similar to what we saw with Intel, implementing PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5 is going to increase complexity and cost of motherboards, making adoption more costly. However, with how ubiquitous DDR4 has been, my suggestion for budget shoppers would be second-hand recent generation CPUs and platforms. 9th or 10th gen Intel and Ryzen 3000 with their respective platforms use PCI Express 3.0 and DDR4, with Ryzen 5000 and 11th gen Intel upgrading to PCI Express 4.0. Although not the latest, they're still fantastic options for the majority of people, offering little performance deficit based on PCI Express revision and memory technologies, potentially making them a fantastic option for people who want the most performance possible at the best price. So shop smarter, compare prices and benchmarks. But before that, we've recently had more information regarding next-gen GPUs, so let's take a look at that now. The next generation of NVIDIA graphics cards have had some really big leaks revealed, including their release timeline. And it looks like you won't be waiting long for what may be a seriously impressive generational improvement. Video cards reported that the RTX 4000 release dates are 100% confirmed, for now, and are subject to change. But the RTX 4090 should be released in August, the 4080 in September, and the 4070 in November this year. This could be quite a bit different compared to their previous recent releases, which had the first three cards launch potentially quicker. And this chart should help you understand when other models may also launch too. But it begs the question, why? Honestly, I think Nvidia are changing up the game plan and allowing a bit of time to respond to AMD here, as this is one of the most important battles between the two companies, at least in recent history. You have to remember that the current generation is the first time in a long time that AMD have been competitive at the high end, and they will absolutely look to dethrone Nvidia with their impressive RX 7000 series GPUs, which we will cover in a bit. But first, a couple really important RTX 4000 leaks and what they mean for the next generation. As reported by video cards, a PCB design of an RX 4000 series board compatible with the AD102 chip was released by Igor's lab, based on pictures they received from an insider source. We also have information that the PCB design of the AD102 and AD103 chip is meant to be the same, meaning what we're looking at should be the reference PCB of the RTX 4090 and potentially 4080 tier cards. So being the reference board, this won't be used in the Founders Edition models, but rather the most common design used by board partners like Asus and EVGA as a basic blueprint for lower end models without modification to things like power delivery. So let's take a look and see what interesting information we can extract from this. On the left, it looks like we have three DisplayPort connectors and one HDMI. We also have an NVLink connector at the top for multi-GPU support, the VRM and power delivery in these two sections here. Then over to the top right, we have what looks to be the new PCI Express 5.0 16-pin power connector and 12 front side and memory modules with the actual GPU die located right in the middle. The two things that stand out the most to me is that the 600 watt power target of 4090 now has even more information confirming it, with this power connector spec topping out at 600 watts. The other thing that's really interesting to me is the 12 front side and memory modules and the fact that this PCB is meant to be the same between the 4090 and the 4080 cards. The reason this is interesting is that the 3090 had both front and back side and memory modules to reach 24 gigabytes, but the 3090 Ti used memory modules with twice the density to be able to place them all on the front. And even though we can't view the back of the card to confirm this, I believe we will only see front sided 2 gigabyte memory modules for the high end 4000 series cards, based on this next leak. We now have images of an RTX 4000 series founders edition cooler rumored to be the 4090 Ti. However, I think only half of that statement is correct. Let me explain. Starting out with the sketchiness. The reason many people believe that this is the RTX 4090 Ti is that included with the leaked images was a trim piece showing the RTX 4090 Ti text. However, when you take a look a little bit closer, anyone with basic Photoshop skills can see that there are obvious red flags here and here where it looks like the text has come from a separate source and been poorly blended into the image. Then again here in the main section of the text where it doesn't show a similar light pattern to anything else on the same plane. And again here too, where the I is a lot lower than the T 
and video wouldn't be that sloppy. So many red flags in my opinion and likely not the 4090 Ti as many people have been led to believe. But I do think it's a card that's much, much more exciting. The RTX 4080. Let me explain why. The cooler itself shows what looks to be a triple slot cooler, similar to the RTX 3090, but the base plate right here is where things get really interesting. Compared to RTX 3000, there's a single base plate for the GPU die and memory modules, which this base plate still has a thermal pads attached, it uses a thermal contact between the modules and the cooler. These pads are the right length for three memory modules here, and three more here, and two more here, equating to eight modules total. And if Nvidia are using two gigabyte memory modules, similar to the RTX 3090 Ti, that makes this a 16 gigabyte card. The same is a rumored spec of the RTX 4080 model. But as always, the closer we get to launch, the more information will come out about these cards. I've covered the specs and everything that there is to know about the next generation GPUs in last month's video, which I will have linked below for you. But let me know in the comments section if I should do a dedicated video. But now let's talk about AMD's impressive next generation lineup, as even though the key information that we knew about it has drastically changed, it may still blow Nvidia out of the water. Before we continue, if you're like me, then I think you're really going to like today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online resource with thousands of inspiring classes and members across 150 countries. It's a place to develop a passion you've been wanting to try or get inspired to be better at what you do best. The first one that I checked out naturally was Script Shoot and Edit with MKBHD to help me make better content for you guys. And maybe you'll find it as useful as I am. But with classes from music production, web development, film and video, even business analytics. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a year of new learning and growth. So if self-development is something you've been wanting to focus on, the first 1,000 people to use a link in the video description or my code below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare to jumpstart your next chapter and get on your path to success, however you define it. New information regarding the specs of AMD's upcoming RX 7000 series GPUs based on their RDNA 3 architecture have been leaked, and it looks like either the previous information was very wrong or something has drastically changed during development. Let me explain. Most of the information and leaks regarding the higher end RX 7000 models, Navi 31 and 32, pointed to a multi-chip module design, meaning multiple distinct graphics processing chips on a single package. This would mainly improve yields for chip manufacturing, lowering costs, and offer a scalable design by adding chiplets as necessary to reach a specific performance target. These benefits are mainly marketed to consumers by way of increased performance and lower cost. However, the hopes of a multi-chip module design and the benefits that come with them seem to be almost dead in the water. The most recent information for the high-end N31 and N32 models points to a design that will contain a single chiplet for the actual graphics processor and multiple MCDs used for Infinity Cache and memory controllers, which unfortunately is not multi-chip for graphics processing. However, splitting the design out this way is also not a standard monolithic die either, which is typical for modern graphics cards. And coupled with the fact that in light of this information, the performance target of the 7900 XT, which is 2.1 to 2.5 times the performance of the 6900 XT, is actually unchanged right now, even whilst reducing the shaders, which is quite typical while manufacturers determine diminishing returns. This leads me to believe that the design was always meant to be implemented this way, and gives AMD the ability to field test a massive architectural shift in GPU computing, before fully implementing this design with additional chips and the first round is still set to release in Q4 this year, after Nvidia. But I'm hoping a future 5950 XT or 8000 series GPU will give us the true next generation of GPUs. But now it's time to take a look at our real world data, including some of the cheapest GPUs I can find on the market right now for each model, as well as how the devastating news that Nvidia's light hash rate mining limiter has been fully unlocked and how that affects your ability to buy a GPU right now or get your hands on the next generation. We have another month of fantastic news for gamers, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be concerned. Especially as Nightash, a popular mining application and power broker, has recently announced a full unlock of Nvidia's light hash rate mining limiter, used to cripple Ethereum mining performance. This is currently only achieved with the latest version of the MB Miner plugin, but now it has been unlocked, it's only a matter of time before it's implemented into other mining software. I've mentioned before that this would be devastating news for gamers, as although non-LHR GPUs would decrease in value, the cost of LHR implementation 
dedicated GPUs would increase on the scalper market due to their increased profitability. However, we should all consider ourselves extremely lucky that this has come at such a time of rapid crypto decline, and the effects of the full unlock seem to have had little impact on the market, with plentiful stock and consistent massive price drops. But before we take a look at some of the best and cheapest GPUs right now, let's take a look and make sure crypto pricing isn't coming back with a vengeance. Starting out with Bitcoin, it is currently down by just over $4,700 compared to last month, or 13%, now sat at $31,344.10. And Ethereum is also down by over $800, or just over 31%, now at $1,854.78. And both are way under half of their peak value back in November. Although Bitcoin hasn't been profitable to mine on a GPU for quite some time, it's a good indication of how other coins are doing. And as Ethereum is the most profitable and most common coin for GPU mining, it has the most relevance. And you should always remember, if Bitcoin and especially Ethereum profitability continues to decrease, which we can confirm with our profitability calculation right here, this means only good news for gamers still looking for GPUs or hopeful for the next generation, as miners become less and less interested in the prospect of investing due to the market's continued downward trend. Speaking of downward trends, this is typically where we go over some of the used market data that I've been collecting, but as new stock levels are returning to normal, it's becoming less relevant for you guys. So I'm going to continue recording this data in the background in case it becomes useful in the future. But I want to quickly show you a few of the cheapest examples of some great GPUs for those of you who have still been holding out or just curious to know where the market is now. If you're looking for a good 1080p or entry level 1440 card, this 6600 from PowerColor is over 10% lower than its launch MSRP. As for Nvidia, you'll be looking at the 3060, which is $100 more for about 5-10% to better rasterization performance and Nvidia's software suite. The 3070 on the other hand is a good option for 1440p, with this gigabyte version being the cheapest, but the design of the Asus KO would likely steal my heart. That is a stunning looking card. But this MSI 6700 XT offers similar performance and more than $100 less, only a couple dollars more than its launch MSRP. And for you higher end shoppers, this gaming Z-Trio 3080 12 gigabyte model is the lowest I have ever seen, even significantly cheaper than all 10 gigabyte models I can find, and close to the performance of the 6800 XT, which is $50 less. But if you were specifically after a different GPU, I'll have all my research with all models and the cheapest cards that I can find for them. I'll have them in the video description for you. But thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, get subscribed, turn on notifications, or at least check out another video before you decide. I'll have some recents in the video description and the comment section for you to check out. Otherwise, guys, a like is always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.